In the next sample exam question, you'll have to modify the variables A through E. Since the variables were created with linked values in the first sample problem, all you need to do is modify those individual values. Begin by double-clicking on the Boss Extrude 1 feature. Select the dimension B. Enter 210. Select the dimension A. Enter 225. Next, modify the dimension C. C was created with the extruded thin feature. Select on extruded thin dimension and enter 176. Modify the cylinder. Select the cylinder, select the value for the dimension D, and enter 137. Select on dimension E, which is the inside cylindrical cut. Enter 39. The equations have not changed. X is still A divided by 3, and Y is B divided by 3 plus 10. Click Rebuild to rebuild the part. Display an isometric view. Select on Mass Properties. At this point, your mass is 16,490. In the CSWP exam, you will have to enter this value exactly. In order to get the problem correct, you must be within 1%. Let's save this now as Sample 3 and go on to the next problem. Sample 3 shows me that I need to change the values that are under link values. Instead of selecting each feature individually, right click on the annotations folder and check display annotations. Now all the dimensions from A through E are displayed, so I can select on them at once. Sometimes dealing with dimensions in this way can be a little confusing, so pick them in alphabetical order. I'll start with A, 209. Then I'll move on to B, 218, C, 169, D at 125, and finally E at 41. Notice how the SOLIDWORKS CSWP sample exam has given you values that are either greater than your initial problem or less than your initial problem. You need to make certain that your model is set up to either increase in size or decrease in size. Okay, I think all our dimensions are entered. Click Rebuild, Display an Isometric View. Select Evaluate, Mass Properties. The value 15,100 is displayed. Enter this individual value in the CSWP exam. Again, you must be within 1% of the overall value in order to get the problem correct. Save. Let's take a look at what we have to modify for the second part for stage two. To make sure I keep this part intact, I'm going to save it as sample four. Now I can always go back to what I know or believe is correct. We have to remove this area over here and make a single pocket. The easiest way is to first suppress the fillet, suppress the counterbore, and finally I'm going to suppress the boss extrude. Well, I have an issue, probably because I reference some geometry. So stop and repair. There's a missing edge on fillet 3. The warning sign indicates where the problem is. Edit the feature. Let's see where the missing edges are. Delete the missing edge and insert the new edge. I can't select this fillet because it's part of the offset from the original sketch. Click OK. There's some more work to do. Expand the feature to display the sketch. Right click edit sketch. We want a square corner. So delete the fillet, right click on the fillet and select delete. Drag the two edges to create a square corner. Click 
Exit Sketch. Right click on Fillet 3, click Edit Fillet. Now you'll be able to select that edge. Click OK. Verify in the new sketch that you have five fillets of radius 10. There are no errors, so you can delete the suppressed features. By suppressing the features first, it helps to determine if you're going to have issues.